Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called The Town That Dreaded Sundown. It's a 2014 meta sequel, not a remake, to the original 1976 film about a mysterious masked serial killer who goes on a killing spree to kill thousands of people during late at night in a town called Texarkana. It stars Allison Timlin, Spencer Tree Clark, Ed Lauder, and one of his last movie roles, Veronica Cartwright, Gary Cole, Anthony Anderson, Joshua Leonard, Edward Herman from The Lost Boys and Richie Rich, Dennis Arhe and Travis Trope. It's written by Roberto Aguero Sacasa and it's directed by Alfonso Gomez Rajon. The movie begins set in a town called Texarkana on Halloween night during an annual showing of the original The Town That Dreaded Sundown at a local driving theater. Two teenagers, Corey Holland and Jamie Lerner, both played by Spencer Tree Clark and Allison Timlin, are watching the film only to find out that Lerner isn't enjoying it that much. So they drove around to a secured area in the woods where all of a sudden a mysterious mass killer known as the Phantom Killer had strike attacking them and and somehow you know had to warn Leonard to look back you know because he had a gun and decided to kill by shooting him and slashing him um, violently and also gives Learner a warning as a result of this by saying as a threat this is for Mary make them remember so after that you know Learner had winds up um, escaping from the killer walks back to the drive-in and falls so during the next morning Learner winds up in the hospital being interviewed by the police on investigating about what happened during that night which leads to uh, later when her grandmother Lillian who's played by Veronica Cartwright had started to watch the news only to discover that the attacks that occurred that night was very similar to the original attacks that she remembers so the next day Lerner decided to research the crimes that, I, that actually occurred you know trying to go to the city hall and, and all those other places you know, looking at all these old newspaper articles that they save about the mass killer. You know, the phantom killer, that is. So the next day, they wound up at Holland's funeral, where everybody was there. Two days before Thanksgiving, two couples, uh, Kendra Collins Thomas and Daniel Torrance, that came around. You know, they went to the airport after Daniel's return from the military. They went up at a local motel. They had sex over there. Till all of a sudden, the Phantom Killer came around and and slashing, um, chopped up, mutilated, even shoot him. Yeah, while they were arriving. Of course, uh, Kendra tries to escape from the mass killer, but sadly, he's already been blasted uh, inside the car. Yeah. Lots of blood going around. Yeah, the movie had a lot of gore that's happened. And they even smash uh, her boyfriend's severe he head as well. So that was really messed up. Meanwhile, Lerner had received a phone call from Holland's phone to find out that the message that the Phantom had told her, that he actually said this, I'm going to do it again and again until you make them remember. So, as a result, she decided to tell her police escort, Deputy Foster, who was played by Jasper Leonard, about the incident that happened. So then, the very next day, residents had secured their houses and go to a town meeting where they meet Reverend Cartwright, who's played by Edward Herman. And with the help of Nick, you know, continuing the research, you know, who's played by Travis Trope, they became best of friends. And they went to the police station where Texas Ranger Lone Wolf Morales, who's played by Anthony Anderson, you know, takes over the investigation while continuing her research at home. 
Lerna somehow receives an email from the Phantom Killer and decided to have Lerna take this to the police to reveal the theories that might be disapproven. While Nick is waiting for her to return home and ask her out on the Virgil being held for the Phantom victims. And while there, the Phantom shows up and, sh and was shut down by a Marine officer. So they, they was told that the host of the social event that they celebrated, along with the band members, you had jo Johnny and Roy, decided to leave the dance and was warned by Deputy Tillman, who's played by Gary Cole, to go s straight home because, you know, the mysterious killer is going to go around. Well, they wound up at a lonely junkyard which, which is filled with old signs everywhere in which all of a sudden the mass killer had finally came killing Johnny and Roy by having Johnny beaten up and Roy getting tied up. And here's one of the most memorable scenes in the film which you may have seen in the original film, the 1976 film. Yeah, they also did some transitions in the movie too, you know, between all these original archive footages from the movie. Yeah, I, I like how they shot this in, in that sort of way because it makes it look more <laughs> grindhouse looking and that sort of way. And it works. But the scene that I was talking about was when when the Phantom Killer had recreated a trombone weapon in which, yeah, from the movie, Johnny was already being shot to death already and he decided to use the trombone weapon by stabbing Roy to death like this. Just like that. <laughs> so, uh, he told Deputy Foster that Lerner may be the man that was shut down at the Virgil, was surprisingly a suicidal teen, and, then, and there were two more murders that followed. Unfortunately, he comes more mysterious when Nick actually found out you know, with Lerner that a guy named Charles P. Pierce, who might be who I think he is, has a son who might be still alive and lives in Texarkana. That's where Tillman goes on a bar on Christmas Eve to meet up with a woman, you know, doing all this other stuff, and then, yep, runs in the farm field being killed once again by the Phantom. Then all, all this had have been going around, you know, trying to search for him, and then when Lerner finally spotted the killer once again after all this time, that's where we discovered what was happening after all of this. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to give away the, the ending of the film, although I do think it needs a lot of work with it, because I thought it was, it was poorly done as it turned out. Um, I don't know, but it could have been so much better than that. But the fact is, though, um, I thought the film, despite of its problems, I thought it was a decent movie. Um, so, sort of close enough to be like the original 1976 film, with some of the details they put into it, and the way they shot it. And I haven't seen the 1976 film in a while, but I'll, I'll definitely check it out, since it's it's been so long since I've last seen it. It's already on Blu-ray now by Shaw Factory, just so you know. This one, most movies I've been seeing in recent years, mostly in this generation, they haven't been very well made as, as far as this generation is concerned. Yeah, you know, mostly they've been shot very ugly. You know, they always use CGI blood and all this other stuff that they went into it. Yeah, with a lot of gory effects that they put in. Um, they did have this in the film too, but this one was even more intense than ever before. Although there are some that are well made, but I guess they seem to sort of play out like, like how it was. But this one was actually well made as it turned out, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I mean, as much as I enjoyed the 1976 film, this one was really something. Um, and yeah, it's very scary. Um, it's very intense with, with gore. A um, bunch of brutal and excessive violence that's very graphic as you can see but it has everything that they were hoping for you know, and, and the fact that it's based on a true story so that's really interesting great that they had a great cast in the film including Veronica Cartwright you know who's been in so many films you know, over the years you know she's playing the grandmother in this film so she did a very good job 
And also the fact that Ed Laudner, whose last film, sad to say, was a terrible movie I saw called Trouble with the Curve. Um, it's hard to believe he passed away last year in October, but he was a great actor. He's been in so many great movies, including the original The Longest Yard. I really enjoy that film. Also, Gary Cole. You know, I haven't seen him in a while since his last film I saw him where he played a villain. A drug kingpin in the movie uh, Pineapple Express. Yeah, because he's always been good in so many films he's been in, including, yeah, he was he played uh, uh, Mike Brady in the movie, the Brady Bunch movie along with a Barry Brady sequel. And he's been doing other work. Anthony Anderson, you know, who often has been in so many of those African-American films and all his other stuff, comedies and all that. He did a decent job in this film, you know, playing a, a Texas Ranger. Hasn't been seen much in the movie, too, so sadly, but that's okay. Uh, so it was great to see these actors again. I mean, they could have had some of the cameos from the original film, too. That would have been awesome. Including uh, Dawn Wells, who played Marianne in Gilman's Island. So she was in the original film, and I think it would have been cool to see her in this film. Yeah. So it was great. Also, to keep this in mind, uh, this movie was only being played in select theaters in October, which, sad to say, it wasn't playing in my area. They later played it on Halloween night on Epix, and I think it's still playing on Epix, which is a pay TV network that, that's only available on Dish Network and some cable companies, including Time Warner and Charter. That's the only way you get to have that channel. But they did have it online. You know, I had a hard time looking for that film, so I finally watched it, and I was pretty much impressed. It was something I never thought I expected to see for a horror film, and I was hoping it was going to be as good as it can be. And, and we're luck, it really was. And also the fact that it, this movie is now being released by the now reassured Orion Pictures Corporation. Yep, the same company that released Robocop, The Terminator, The Signs of the Lambs, UHF, all the Woody Allen movies, everything. Yeah, this company has been going on for, for years until they were having some bankruptcy problems back in the 90s. Then, yeah, they also released the Bill and Ted movies as well, too. And all this other stuff. Yeah, so they had a hard time dealing with um, bankruptcy until it was already being bought by MGM back in 1997. And since then, you know, they only released a fewer films and, until their last one in 1999, which is called One Man's Hero by Tom Berenger. Didn't do so well. So they haven't been releasing any movies ever since until now. <laughs> Because they do own the, the rights to their library, so it makes it wonder. So they've been, you know, incredible all this time. So, yeah, it's great to see that company again. Because I was always familiar with the the original logo where they show the, the star field. And you see the, the eight stars that's um, forming into an O and, and then reveals the text, everything. Originally, they were owned by Warner Brothers until... They became independent, and that's when everything all started. Yeah. Making a lot of blockbusters and Academy Award winner movies, everything. Yeah. So apparently they they came back to maybe just reviewing, you know, movies are just being selected in other theaters, or so on and so forth. They're also releasing video on demand movies. You know, now that they just released this film along with that Brazilian movie. A comedy, I believe, and all those other ones. This is the film that they're going to release. And, and they're going to continue to release more independent movies and all this other stuff. And I hope they continue to do it because you know, it, it's great to see Orion Pictures back on screen again. Yeah. And let's hope for more. It's also by the same producers that gave us Paranormal Activity, Insidious, as well as Glee, American Horror Story, and Nip Tuck. Yeah, so... They knew that they really were excited to take an original film and turn it into a meta sequel to make it look even better than before. So I think you know they knew they wanted to make it more exciting and scary. So that's what they did. Seeing that um, the original film, you know, doesn't get talked about that much, sadly. But I know a lot of people have remembered it, so I know that's for sure.
that's the movie, The Town That Dreaded Sundown. And the meta sequel, not a remake of the original 1976 film. So I definitely give this horror film three stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.